five weeks after Monaco, the World Championship comes alive again at Dijon in the beautiful Côte d'Or wine country of central France at the oldest Grand Prix of them all. And with dramatically developed cars, James Hunt retired, Patrick Depaye injured and Keke Rosberg and Jackie Ix in their places, the championship still has eight races to go, with points from the best four to count. Ferrari's Jody Schechter's got a commanding six-point lead over Ligier's Jacques Lafitte, with Villeneuve, Reutemann and Depaye equal third, and Mario Andretti, the reigning world champion, a disconsolate sixth. The two days of practice on Dijon's 2.4-mile circuit in bright, hot sunshine have been sensational. For Frenchman Jean-Pierre Jabouy and René Arnoux in the new twin-turbo Renaults have shattered the opposition by lapping fastest nearly seven seconds inside the record. Behind them, on the second row of the grid, Gilles Villeneuve's Ferrari and the incredible young Nelson Piquet's Brabham. Row three, Jody Schechter alongside Nicky Lauder's Brabham and one second covers the first six. World champion Mario Andretti, Lotus 80, French Grand Prix winner 1977 and 78. The ever cheerful Jacques Lafitte in his Ligier, second in the world championship, but only eighth fastest in practice. Alan Jones, Saudi Williams, been driving superbly all season and he's due for a win. Jody Schechter Ferrari leads the world championship. Gilles Villeneuve, Ferrari, winner in South Africa and Long Beach. René Arnoux, Renault, on the front row in only his 14th Grand Prix. And Jean-Pierre Jabouy, only one finish in seven Grand Prix, but pole positions in South Africa and here. And there's a 120,000 French crowd to see the 190-mile, 80-lap French Grand Prix. In fact, with the eyes of all France on them, bear the front rank. Jabouy, Renault, Arnoux, Renault, ready for the 80 laps. And away they go, and through the middle punches Gilles Villeneuve to the right, Nelson Piquet. Jabouy tucks into second position and Jody Schechter challenges on the left. But Jabouy closes the door, Arnoux goes wired. Piquet goes through into fourth position as they go round the right-hander at Villeroy at some 120 miles an hour. Villeneuve leads, Jabouy in second position, Schechter is in third and Piquet is in fourth position as they go round the Sablier, down to La Bretelle. Third gear, 120 miles an hour, still downhill to the Parabolique for hairpin. Second gear, 95 miles an hour, then uphill over the crest and accelerating hard all the time up into third gear and it's Gilles Villeneuve in the Ferrari in second place as they go round the double left-hander it's Jean-Pierre Jabouy, Jody Schechter is in third position Nelson Piquet is fourth, Jarier is up into fifth position and Nicky Lauda is sixth as they go round La Combe accelerating all the time this is a constant right-hander at 150 miles an hour and again the start, the two Renaults get away, but the turbo pickup is not as good as the Ferrari, and Villeneuve goes through. Watch Jody Schechter, number 11, to the left, as he comes out of Jabouy's slipstream, and Villeneuve goes into the right-hander first, Jabouy second, Schechter third, Piquet taking fourth position, and we rejoin on lap two, with Villeneuve leading Jabouy, Schechter in third position, Nelson Piquet in the V12 Brabham is behind him and there is Jarrier and Nicky Lauda, fifth and sixth. Jacques Lafitte in the Ligier, sixth and Alan Jones in seventh place. Up to the Parabolique, the second gear corner, accelerating hard now and Gilles Villeneuve leading. And it looks as already as though Villeneuve with two wins behind him this season intends to make it three in the Ferrari. His team leader, Jody Schechter, behind him in third position. Jabwe second. Schechter in third place. Nelson Piquet, the young Brazilian. There he is in fourth place. Jarier fifth. Lauda sixth. Lafitte, Jones and René Arnoux is up into eighth position. End of lap two. Over the line they go. And there's jostling amongst the eighth, sixth and seventh place men as Jacques Lafitte crosses the line. And Gilles Villeneuve, the young French-Canadian in the Ferrari, is starting to build up a lead. 
Over the line, lap 11, goes Jabwi in second place. There is Jody Schechter and René Arnoux on the left is passing Nelson Piquet to take fourth position. So, Piquet is down to fifth, Alan Jones is sixth, and Jarrier is in seventh position. Look at the gap between Gilles Villeneuve, the leader. There he is, going down to La Bretel. La Bretel means the braces, and it's called the braces because that part of the circuit looks as though it's holding the rest of the circuit up if you look at it on a map. Uphill now, foot hard down. Villeneuve, cool and deliberate. Big lead now over Jabwin. How steady that Ferrari is. Lap 11, Villeneuve, the race leader in this 80-lap French Grand Prix. Next up, Jean-Pierre Jabouy in the yellow and white Renault, and it is proving very reliable so far. It's run two full Grand Prix in special practice here at Dijon. And into lap 12, Villeneuve first, Jabouy second. Jody Schechter in the white helmet and the red Ferrari is in third place, and I do believe that René Arnoux is catching him. He's pulling away from Piquet. And behind Piquet, it's Alan Jones in the Saudi or Williams, who is in sixth position. Chabouy. Schechter. Arnoux. Renault's first and fourth. Piquet. Alan Jones. Jarrier in the Tyrrell. And Nicky Lauda dropping back. Jacques Lafitte. Clay Rigazzoni and Didier Pironi in the second of the Tyrrells. The beautiful Côte d'Or country in the background, and over the crest comes Jean-Pierre Jabouy, challenging hard now, trying to close up on the flying Ferrari in front of him. And there it is, Gilles Villeneuve. And this is where those 2G forces really act. Jabouy has got a head steady on the left of his cockpit, and his head bangs right up against it as he goes round this right-hander. Jackie X, who was taken the place of Patrick Depay, was suffering badly in practice. And now, over the line, goes Gilles Villeneuve. And this is into another lap. Lap completed, into lap 14. Jody Schechter third and René Arnoux closing up. Behind him, Nelson Piquet. There is René Arnoux, number 16, in the 500 horsepower twin-turbo Renault. Piquet is dropping back, and Alan Jones, who drove so superbly at Monaco and at Belgium before then, is closing up. Parabolique. Back into second gear. Villeneuve. Jody Schechter going round the Parabolique, accelerating out, up, over the crest, into the double left at La Bretel, and Mario Andretti is in trouble. Into the pits. Bob Clark working on his car, Rex Hart working on his car. Off comes the wheel, and they're not changing tyres. I thought it was tyre trouble, but it looks from the way they're down there as though it is brake trouble, and it's a very unhappy world champion in the cockpit of the Lotus 80, which has not been a good car for him this season. Jan Lammers towards us, and behind him in the new arrows, the German Jochen Maas is about to be lapped by Gilles Villeneuve in the Ferrari and Jabwi is definitely getting closer. Jean-Pierre Jabwi, number 15 in the Renault, is getting closer, and Arnoux is challenging Jody Schechter for third. And he comes out of his slipstream, and he's going to take it. René Arnoux is taking third place from Jody Schechter. So it is now Renault leading. In second place, it's a Ferrari. In third place, it's a Renault. And in fourth place, it's a Ferrari. Look again. René Arnoux creating history by taking the Renault up into third place and there's another Renault in the lead. And on lap 25, Nicky Lauda, double world champion, coasts in and is he out of the race? Up comes the visor, off come the straps which hold him into position. Out gets a very unhappy Nicky Lauda, and his race is run. It's been a miserable season for him. He's only had one finish in seven races. So, with Lauda telling the marshals how to park the car, 
and having a bit of a discussion about it into lap 33 and Mario Andretti is back in the race we're looking at Jack Lafitte and Emerson Fittipaldi and John Watson in the McLaren who have got closing up on them and are about to lap them Gilles Villeneuve and Jean-Pierre Jabouy and Villeneuve has broken the lap record one minute 11.07 seconds faster than the lap record previously held by Mario Andretti nearly three seconds faster and he's starting to challenge now Gilles Villeneuve look how he has closed up the gap was three seconds and Jabouy has remorselessly clawed it back one hundredth of a second by one hundredth of a second until he is only three or four car lengths behind the race leader Gilles Villeneuve down to La Britelle. and Jabouy's hit the curb he's lost distance he's gone over the corrugated curbing there concrete curbing and that will have rippled the suspension of the Renault. It's thrown his concentration and he's dropping back. And now Villeneuve starts to pull away as Nicky Lauda walks into his sixth retirement of 1979. So, leading Villeneuve, Jabouy, Arnoux, and next up, it's Piquet. It's not Schechter, it's Piquet, with right behind him, Alan Jones. There is Patrick Tombe and then Jody Schechter. So, Piquet is up to fourth. Jones is up to fifth and down to sixth goes Jody Schechter. Villeneuve leads, Jabwe second and René Arnoux in third position. John Watson, 14th position, very unhappy, almost certainly his last race in the McLaren M28 because in the British Grand Prix, the new McLaren is going to be out. And on lap 45, towards us becomes De Angelis. Lafitte out of his lap stream to pass him. And behind him, Bruno Giacomelli in the Alpha. Keke Rosberg on the right. Number 30 is Jochen Maas. And coming through the middle is Gilles Villeneuve with less than a car length behind him. Jean-Pierre Jabouy in second place. What a race this is turning out to be. The 1979 French Grand Prix. And Gilles Villeneuve has now got right in his mirrors, big in his mirrors, just behind his rear aero fall. And there's Giacomelli spinning. Giacomelli in the Brabham, in the Alfa Romeo car, has spun and has been passed by Gilles Villeneuve and, of course, by Jean-Pierre Jabouy. And now the battle for the lead is well and truly on. Lap 46, and we're looking at Jean-Pierre Jabouy, number 15, the 36-year-old Parisian ex-Formula 2 champion of Europe, chasing Gilles Villeneuve ex-Formula Atlantic champion of America and Canada. The man who made his Grand Prix debut in Britain in 1977. Villeneuve, Jabouy. That's Lafitte, followed by De Angelis. They're both going to be lapped by Villeneuve and by Jabouy. Jabouy closing right up on Villeneuve. Into the right-hander. Sweeping round, that's another lap completed. Round Villeroy, up to the Sabli air bends, the right and the left, down to La Bretelle, back into third gear. And Villeneuve will need all his famous cool now, because that yellow and white Renault has got 120,000 frenzied Frenchmen cheering it on every inch of the way. And if Jabouy can get past Villeneuve, he will well and truly be the hero of France today. But Villeneuve leads. Closing up on De Angelis in the shadow. A young Italian from Rome. And is he going to let the two cars behind him, Villeneuve in the Ferrari and Jabouy in the Renault through? It looks like it. Villeneuve is through. And Jabouy is through, and Jabouy is challenging. Jabouy comes out of the slipstream of Gilles Villeneuve, and he's taking the lead. Jean-Pierre Jabouy starts lap 47 out of 80 in the lead. Villeneuve tries to retake it and fails. And so now, a French driver in a French car with a French engine on French tyres is leading the French Grand Prix. An incredible achievement. Jabouy, the man that they said was not a great race driver, but a great test driver, takes, watch it again, as Jabouy takes Gilles Villeneuve and the lead of the French Grand Prix. 
magnificent Grand Prix motoring and Javoui has proved now, if he never does anything again, that he's a magnificent driver. Jackie X, that is. Car number 25, the Ligier. Jackie X, who took the place of the injured Patrick Depaye, has had mechanical trouble and looks as though he is well and truly out of the race. Coming towards us now, Jean-Pierre Jabouy, and Jabouy has now broken the lap record. One minute, 10.85 seconds, a new lap record, and it's held by Jean-Pierre Jabouy in the 500 horsepower twin-turbo Renault. Villeneuve now second, René Arnoux in third position. And there is Jabouy, the leader, and he's pulling away from Villeneuve. Maybe Villeneuve's tyres are going off, but whatever it is, because he's on Michelin tyres, which is the same as those of Jean-Pierre Jabouy and Arnoux behind him, whatever the reason, Jean-Pierre Jabouy is showing that the Renault is fastest around this Dijon course. There is Villeneuve. Nelson Piquet, fourth position, he was, is out of the race. Into the catch fencing, obviously, thank heavens, perfectly all right, but the Brabham a very, very sorry mess indeed. And Nelson Piquet climbs over the Armco fencing while Jackie Ix has climbed the bank to watch the race. Perhaps he's a bit worried about facing Gérard Ducarouge, the Ligier team manager, about his broken motor car. And Jody Schechter into the pits. Jody Schechter, eighth position. That's the trouble. Lap 56. Jody Schechter's tyres were obviously going off. He has slipped down from third to eighth position. He is out of the World Championship points and he is the World Championship leader. He has to finish sixth or higher to get World Championship points. And Moro Forgeri, the Ferrari team chief, claps his hands and out of the pits goes Schechter. Back into the race. Javoui, now 13 seconds ahead of Gilles Villeneuve. And there is Javoui. There's a long gap now. Javoui can afford to slow down and pace himself home. He hasn't got all that far to go. Renault reliability has not been all that good in previous Grand Prix. They've only had three finishes, but Renaults are well and truly on their way now. There is the leader, Jean-Pierre Javoui with a lot of the race run, not all that much still to go, and a big gap between himself and the second place man as Mario Andretti, who has been testing in effect, comes into the pits, and he is obviously out of the race. He's finished, no points for the reigning world champion in the French Grand Prix. So now, Renault leads Ferrari, leads Renault, and lap 75, that's Villeneuve in second position, and closing right up on him is René Arnoux, the incredible young Frenchman in only his first real season of Formula One racing in a car which looks as though it can win, because Jabouy is leading at the moment. Schecter behind has been lapped, of course, and now the question is, can René Arnoux make it a Renault first and second by catching and passing Gilles Villeneuve? They're on lap 75. The gap is 1.7 seconds as they go into the parabolique. Down to the double left at La Bretelle. Villeneuve, Arnoux, Ferrari, Renault. Round to La Combe, and this is where the G-forces start to work. This is where the cars drift right out over the curbing, as Villeneuve just did. From La Combe down to the Cour de Pouar. It's a continuous fast right-hander. When I say fast, I mean 150 miles an hour, and Arnoux is right with Villeneuve. As they come to lap 76, closing up on De Angelis, and Arnoux it pops out and has a look. That's Jody Schechter in the background has been lapped. Arnoux has another look. And Villeneuve locks up his tyres. He is trying very, very hard indeed. There is no play acting here. Into the left-hander and the right-hander at Sablier. Down to La Bretelle again. Downhill. Very fast. Lap 76. 80 lap race. Jabouy a long way ahead. Aiming for a finish. And if he finishes, he will win at the speed he's going now. Who is going to be second? There's Villeneuve. Parabolic behind him, Arnoux, 
Renault first, Renault third, Ferrari second, and Arnu right in the mirrors now of Gilles Villeneuve. As they go round Britel, up to Lacombe, lap 76. That's De Angelis that they're closing up on. And if they catch him and he balks them, it could change the whole complexion of this race. Keeping round the Cours de Poire. Then they burst up over the crest and into the sight of the grandstand. And it's De Angelis going to be lapped. It's Villeneuve. This is the start of lap 77. And Villeneuve locks up the tyres again. And the order is Jabouy, Renault. And then Villeneuve in second place. Behind him is Arnoux in third position. Alan Jones in the Saudi Williams fourth. Jean-Pierre Jarrier in the Candy Tyrrell is fifth and Clay Regazzoni in the second of the two, Saudi Williams is in sixth position and scoring world championship points as he did at Monaco. Now, will De Angelis give way? Yes, he does. He moves over politely and considerately and they both burst through. Villeneuve, second. Arnu third. They're on their way. There's a clear circuit in front of them. And only three full laps at the end of this one. Fourth gear, up into fifth when they go over the crest of the hill, up to 160, 165 miles an hour as they come down to the right-hander at Vilroy. And it's there that they can pass, and Arnoux's going to do it. René Arnoux is challenging for second as they come up to Vilroy, but Villeneuve will not give way. Arnoux's got the inside line and the shorter line. And he takes second place as they go into the right-hander and the left at Sablier. And now Renaults indeed are first and second in the French Grand Prix. And the French crowd is going mad, roaring in the background. Replay and Arnoux comes out from behind the rear of Villeneuve's Ferrari into the inside at the right-hander at Villeroy. And look at the courage of both of them as they both refuse to back off. Back on lap 78, Brown Brittel and Arnu, this incredible young man with so comparatively little Formula One experience, is having the effrontery to pull away from Villeneuve in the previously virtually all-conquering flat 12 Ferrari. Well, this is incredible. The twin turbo Renaults appeared at Monaco, not their circuit. And now we're into the start of the 79th and last lap but one with René Arnoux second and Villeneuve go. Incredible! Villeneuve stood on everything, locked up his tyres, got the line and he's back into second position on the last lap but one and the French crowd aren't very happy about that and who can blame them? Down to La Bretel. Arnoux's done it once, can he do it again? There's Villeneuve going through on the replay into the right-hander at Villeroy. And the wheels are overlapping. Arnoux's offside front wheel was actually tucked inside the two near side wheels of Villeneuve's Ferrari as they went round the right hander at Villeroy. This is incredible. This is the 79th lap in this 80 lap historic French Grand Prix, the oldest Grand Prix of them all. This is the 65th Grand Prix, and there has never been a more exciting battle for a major position than this one with such French interest. Jabwe still ahead. And he's closed right up on Villeneuve and he's going to try again. They're coming into the start of the last lap behind Jochen Maas in the A2 arrows. And Arnu does it, does he? And Villeneuve locks up. And Villeneuve has had to go wide and Arnu's on the inside as they go round Villeroy. He's got the shorter line, he's got second position. He's got second position, he's through, they bang wheels. He's off, he's off, and he's back again. René Arnoux off the circuit and back again and he's and now Villeneuve's in second position and this is the last lap and Villeneuve goes over the corrugations and he nearly loses the front as they go up to Parabolique on the 80th and last lap and he's back he's in second position Villeneuve is second in the Ferrari down to third position goes Arnoux to La Bretel 80th 80th lap in this 80 lap race and there's less than a third of it to go. Now, can Arnoux 
on the tremendously fast Lacombe Cour de Pua section, 150 miles an hour, get past. They go past Jochen Maas and Jabwe wins. Jean-Pierre Jabwe has won in the Renault, who is going to be second? Villeneuve is at the moment. Arnoux is in third position. Into the Cour de Pua they come. There is Ricardo Patrese and Villeneuve is second. Arnu is third. Behind them and lapped are Jochen Maas and Jody Schechter. And an incredible, heart-stopping French Grand Prix as they go into the victory lap with Jabwe nine points for the World Championship. Villeneuve second, Arnu third. Alan Jones fourth in the Saudi Williams. In the Candy Tyrrell, Jarier fifth. And in the second Saudi Williams car, Clay Regazzoni one point. Does that change the World Championship? Well, the answer to that is that it does make a slight difference, but Jody Schechter is still in the lead in the World Championship. Second, Villeneuve. Third is Lafitte. Fourth equal, Reutemann and Depay. And sixth is still Mario Andretti. And a new lap record for René Arnoux. One minute, 9.2. And so, as the crowd goes away, let us look again at that last lap, an incredible last lap, as René Arnoux, on replay, goes into the right-hander at Villeroy. Holds the lead as they go for second place, as they go down Sablier, off the course, back onto it again. Villeneuve closes up on the inside line and retakes second position as they jostle and bang wheels down into the left-hander at La Bretel for the 80th and last time, up to the Parabolique. And this is where Arnoux lost second place. He ran too wide, Villeneuve goes through on the inside, holds the position, because if you've got the racing line from this point onwards, even René Arnoux cannot get past. So, with Ricardo Jochen Maas passed, Villeneuve goes through, Jabouille wins the French Grand Prix of 1979, and up to the line come the battle for second and third places, Villeneuve and Arnoux, Ferrari and Renault. And that is it, it's as close as that as they go across the line and René Arnoux has made his reputation at the French Grand Prix today and so of course has Jean-Pierre Jabouille, the first Frenchman to win the French Grand Prix for...